Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Rustam Gasparian, Armenians and the Armenian Carpets. It is extremely disappointing that the European Union, represented by Charles Michel, addresses the people of Artsakh with the term Armenians living in the former NKO, Geham Stepanian, ACIHR, requests information from Azerbaijan on two captive Armenian servicemen. The newcomer tried to assimilate not only the culture of natives, but also the territories and places named Rube Melkonian, portrait of the Armenian community and interesting facts in Arman Merujanian's new book. The children took part in loud readings of Western Armenian poetry, book discussions, literary meetings, talks and exhibitions. Commander of the Order of the Golden Eagle, Rustam Rafikovich Gasparian, was born on April 11, 1961, in Janvid, Oktemberian district of Armavi region. Since 1988, he took part in the Artsakh movement, founded the Sev Hovaz detachment in his native village, held the position of commander of the detachment, took part in the defense and liberation of the borders of Artsakh and Armenia. The combat of Sev Hovaz started with the defense of Yerakh borders and continued with the liberation of all almost all regions of Artsakh. From 1994 to 2000, he served in RAFA, holding different commanding posts. During the days of the 44-day war, the unit under the command of Rustam Gasparian was again in the front line. Rustam gave his two sons a worthy upbringing to the fighters. It was not by chance that together with his son, he went to the front. Since September 28 in Shahumyan and since October 11 in Hadrut, brave soldiers of the detachment strictly fulfilled the combat task, rendering powerful attacks to the enemy. In 2020, from the UAV of the Azerbaijani Armed Forces, Rustam Gasparian's car was attacked, as a result of which his son, 29-year-old Rafi Gasparian, died on the post. Rustam received head injuries. On 16 October, Rustam Gasparian was operated in Stepanagert, after which he was transferred to Goris Medical Center, then to Erebuni Medical Center. On October 17, Rustam Gasparian passed away. The Armenian Plateau is one of the ancient centers of carpet waving. The Armenian rug or carpet has taken different names in different times and regions. In Armenian literature, the word carpet is found in the Bible translation since the 5th century. For centuries, the word rug has been synonymous with carpet in literature. It is noteworthy that another name for carpet, Hali or Gali, comes from Galikala, the Arabic name for the city of Karin, known for its rich carpet art. Another synonym for carpet, Basma is found in medieval Armenian literature and comes from the word seed. Armenian carpets have harmonious colors due to red, white, blue, green, yellow and their variations. The yellow color is obtained from yellow flowers, the red color from red insects called Vartang Armir and the roots of shrubs called Toron Rubia, and the green color from walnut shells from which shades of brown can also be obtained. The black color was obtained from pomegranate peel, the blue color was obtained by mixing dyes from different plants but mainly the famous indigo dye was imported from India. In the Middle Ages, the fame of Armenian carpets was largely due to the shades obtained from Wartan Karmir, which is why Armenian carpets were also called red carpets during the Arab Caliphate. One of the characteristics of Armenian carpets is the wool of Balba sheep and Angora goat used as raw materials. Cotton and silk yarn were also widely used in the region where cotton and silk yarn cultivation flourished. The most important feature of Armenian carpets is their ornament because none of them is woven just for the sake of it. Each pattern has its own meaning and significance. Armenian carpets bear numerous ritual, pictorial, and theological patterns. The ornaments used in Armenian carpets were also widely used in sculpture, miniatures, architecture, and silversmithing. It is upsetting that the EU, in the face of the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, refers to Artsakh people as Armenians living in former NKO, disregarding the fact of the decades long existence. The human rights defender of Artsakh, Geram Stapanian, noted this is in statement. Such formulation made intentionally by a union that champions human rights values worldwide not only hurt the feelings of Artsakh people but also bring a destructive effect to the peace process of the Nagorno Karabakh conflict, as they ignore its main benefits 
beneficiaries write Artsakh people, Stepanyan added. The neglect of Artsakh people's will and interest and the intentional avoidance of using the term Nagorno-Karabakh definitely do not contribute to the peace negotiations or the initiative of the EU, but pave the way to the forced subjugation of Artsakh with a sustainable level of democracy into an armenophobic and authoritarian state Azerbaijan, the Artsakh Ombudsman concluded. The European Court of Human Rights has made a decision based on Armenia's application and requested Azerbaijan to provide information by June 6 whether the two Armenian servicemen kidnapped by Baku authorities are in Azeri custody as captives or any other status. In the event of Baku authorities confirming the detention of the two Armenian troops, the ECIHR demanded Baku authorities to provide information about their health and detention conditions. The Office of the Representative of Armenia for International Legal Affairs said in a statement. Armenia requested on May 28 the ECHR to indicate interim measures to protect the fundamental rights of the two Armenian service members. At the same time, a demand was made to provide information about the place of their detention, conditions and state of health. In Yerevan, the Department of Iranian Studies at ECU and the Center for Caucasian Studies at Tehran University jointly organized a roundtable discussion on the millennial friendship of Armenia and Iran and regional processes. We consider it our mission to also contribute to the creation of a scientific and cultural atmosphere for Armenian-Iranian relations, since political, diplomatic and economic relations are often formed in such an atmosphere, Vartan Voskanyan, head of ECU Department of Iranian Studies, said at the beginning of the discussion. ECU Faculty of Oriental Studies Dean Robe Melkonian in turn pointed out that it's a great honor and joy to welcome such a scientific, one might say, civilizational event whose roots go back thousands of years, and they realizing their duty continue this tradition of thousands of years which connects the indigenous and ancient people in this region. In his view, especially in this turbulent period, Armenians and Iranians can serve as the best example in terms of coexistence, living side by side, respect Protecting each other in the matter of cherishing and preserving peace, not in words but in deeds. Alliance and important peoples are appropriating or trying to appropriate not only culture, literature, famous writers, but also territories and even toponyms of indigenous people. In this context, Armenians and Iranians are targeted by outsiders. Therefore, we are more than obliged to continue to promote our centuries-old best traditions in academic arenas as well. With the blessing and support of Archbishop Yezras Nersisyan, head of the Russian and new Nahijevan Diocese of the Armenian Apostolic Church, a new book, The Armenian Community in Pictures and Faces, by Armen Marujanyan, editor of the St. Petersburg newspaper Havatank, was published. This popular science book is dedicated to the history of the Armenian community of St. Petersburg. The book reflects the most interesting facts and events starting from the time when the community was formed during the times of Peter the Great and up to the withdrawal from the historical arena of the aristocratic Armenian clans, which played a significant role in the life of the country. Many names and events are highlighted in the book for the first time. Merujanya masterfully portrays the lives of prominent representatives of various spheres, including portraits of such figures as Lazarians, Loris Melikov, Madatov, Ivazovsky, Surenyans, Yekmalians, Romanos Melikian. The author convincingly showed that Russian Armenians were not sideline observers of the events. Having integrated into the Russian environment, they cherish their dream of a historical homeland. The government of Western Armenia welcomes any publication describing the lives and activities of the natives of Western Armenia scattered all over the world who escaped the Turkish Yatagan. Armen Merujanyan's book confirms the strength and ability of indigenous peoples. Armenia, wherever they find themselves taking care of the welfare of their families, are initially engaged in the restoration and strengthening of the homeland. The heroes of the book are an example of that. An example of this is Loris Melikov, as Minister of Internal Affairs of the Russian Empire, in fact, a dictator with the duties of a prime minister. Loris Melikov managed to realize part of his dreams by liberating a number of provinces of Western Armenia. It is this dream that makes the deported Armenians at the first opportunity to enroll in the service structures, which makes it possible to serve the motherland in parallel. We are grateful once again to Armen Marujanyan and other figures who pass the patriotic way of life of the great Armenians to the generations through their patriotism, their patriotism and pass on the way of life of the great Armenians to the generations. 
A month dedicated to Western Armenian literature ended at the Hunkoper National Children's Library. Throughout May, children who visited the library participated in lounge readings of Western Armenian poetry, book discussions, literary meetings, talks, and exhibitions. Since 2010, the Western Armenian language has been included in UNESCO's electronic atlas of the world's language in danger, with the status of definitely endangered from the existing levels of danger, recognizing the role and importance of each cultural center in preserving an endangered language, the library has taken on the mission of rediscovering Western Armenian literary heritage and the Western Armenian language for children. The program introduced the works of Magartic, Beshik Tashilian, Siamantov, Hantekian, and Vahekhach to the children visiting the library. As part of the project, children had the opportunity to listen to patriotic songs and fairy tales in Western Armenian. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs>